Check. Is this thing on? Check. We got trains coming through. Can we stop the trains? Welcome back, friends. It's Anders Ericsson. Today, I have a thought-provoking, profound question for all of you. I'm going to be comparing two very similar, yet different, Mezcal cocktails. They're contemporary, based on the last word, the Division Bell and the Naked and Famous. These drinks are, I'm trying to think of a big word, very similar. So at what point are they no longer each other? And one of these drinks is very personal to me. You see, I thought that I invented it. I did not. I'm Anders Ericsson, and this is not a masterclass. This is a YouTube video. So if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go make the Division Bell and the Naked and Famous to the bar. After the sponsorship, you guys thought I was serious. Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. They are a monthly membership club delivering top shelf goods to you every month. It's easy to get started and free to join. Go online, fill out a quiz, and based on those results, you start getting assigned monthly boxes. This could include anything from barware, kitchen goods, outdoor gear, all kinds of stuff. 90% of their products are from small businesses, many of which are located here in the US. Each box is valued right around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that. Every month, they send you a preview of the box that is gonna be coming your way. You can do one of three things. One, keep it. Two, exchange it for a different box. Or three, tell them you don't want a box and you will get charged absolutely zero dollars. I've got three boxes here. The first one is the flip box. Inside, this cool flip knife. It's beautiful. Made from Damascus steel. It also has a leather pouch with a belt loop and it has a honing stick. I'm gonna use it to open the next like a surgeon. Box number two is the chill box. And inside we have a portable cooler. This thing is awesome. I am a man who carries around bottles. I've got a studio that's not part of my home. I'm constantly bringing bottles back and forth. This is gonna be perfect for that. Look at that, it also has a bottle opener. Next, my last box. This is the split box. It is a hatchet. Yeah, didn't see that coming. If you are out in the woods and you need a lemon for your sour cocktail, how are you gonna get that lemon cut open? Hatchet, obviously. That's a no-brainer. Go to the link down below, use the code Anders20 at checkout and you get 20% off your first box. Thank you, Bespoke Post. Now the video. Division Bell, Naked and Famous. Similar cocktails, and I'm gonna start by telling you how I was introduced to both of them. This was in 2014, I was working behind the bar, and a lady comes in and orders a drink that is smoky, tart, and pink, a dealer's choice. So I decide to come up with an original cocktail based on the last word. I already knew that I liked mezcal last words, so that's where I was gonna start. I substituted the green chartreuse for Aperol, giving it a pink hue, and she really liked it. She ordered a second one. And because she ordered a second one, I said, you get to name it. And she named it the Smoky Rose because it's rose colored and it's smoky, you, you get it. Now, it was a success. In the following evenings, I started making it more and more and even featured it one night on the chalkboard. A Couple weeks later, one of my regulars comes in, orders a mezcal cocktail, I make him the smoky rose. He takes one sip and said, this is just like a drink I just had in Los Angeles called the Naked and Famous. I had never heard of the Naked and Famous at the time, but later that night, I looked up the recipe of the Naked and Famous, and yes, it is very similar to the Smoky Rose. The internet has a way of knowing what you're gonna to wanna to look at next. So I saw similar drinks to the Naked and Famous and saw the Division Bell. And when I saw that one, my heart sank a little bit because it is the same ingredients as the Smoky Rose. Uh, the ratios are a little different, but it's basically, I mean, it's, it's pretty close. On top of that, it predated my cocktail by five years. Now, I know I'm not alone here. If you've created a drink, and you found out it already existed somewhere else under another name, you know that feeling. Don't be discouraged. This happens all the time. Cocktails are being made all around the world. There's bound to be overlap. Now I should cover the history bit because I need to give credit where credit is due. We'll start by the division bell because that came first. That cocktail was created in 2009 by Phil Ward. Yes, the Phil Ward who created the final Ward. Probably the most famous last word riff. You see why I felt like I was unintentionally copying somebody who's really good at bartending? I'm not bitter. I've let it go. I let it go a long time ago. I even, I had put the Smoky Rose in my, my book of original cocktails and I've since erased it. I don't care. It's no skin off my back. And it is named after a Pink Floyd album, The Division Bell, which was a great album. So now 
The Naked and Famous. Now, The Naked and Famous was created in 2011, and this drink was created by Joaquin Simon in New York City. And the name Naked and Famous is a great name and named after a lyric of a song called Tricky Kid by Tricky. But what I find fascinating about both these drinks is they both have the same starting point being the last word, but they approach it slightly differently. And it would be easier for me to talk about this with the booze in front of me, so now the booze. In the history, I went over the division bell first. However, uh, here I'm going to pull out the ingredients for the Naked and Famous first. It just is gonna make sense in my head and it will make sense for you because I will explain myself very thoroughly. For the Naked and Famous, you will need mezcal, yellow chartreuse, Aperol, and fresh lime juice. Mezcal, I am using Del Maguey Vita, really big smoky flavor and it works great in both of these drinks. Yellow chartreuse, this is an important ingredient. This stuff is hard to come by. I've been hanging on to this bottle. We won't need it for the next cocktail. Aperol, you will need for both cocktails. People say it's this bitter aperitif. I think it's more of like a sweet bitter, akin to Campari, but much less abrasive. Lime juice, freshly squeezed. Now for the division bell. And this is where things get interesting. As a refresher, the last word template is gin, green chartreuse, maraschino liqueur, and lime juice. For the Naked and Famous, instead of gin, we have mezcal. Instead of green chartreuse, we have yellow chartreuse. Instead of maraschino liqueur, we have Aperol, and the lime remains the same. On to the division bell. We won't need the yellow chartreuse, but we will still need the mezcal, and the Aperol actually takes the place of the chartreuse. We are gonna bring back in the maraschino from the last word. The Aperol is no longer replacing the maraschino, is now replacing the chartreuse. If you like to nerd out on cocktails, you might find that interesting, like me. In fact, this is the drink that I came up with. However, Phil Ward takes it a couple steps further by breaking up that all equal parts ratio and then adds grapefruit oil at the end. Let's build. Okay, so I'm gonna be shaking both of these cocktails and to keep things simple for you, the viewer, I'm going to build one cocktail and then I'm gonna build the next. Let's start with three quarters of an ounce of mezcal. To that, we will add three quarters of an ounce of yellow chartreuse, three quarters of an ounce of Aperol, and three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. All equal parts. Now onto the division bell. One ounce of mezcal, three quarters of an ounce of Aperol, half an ounce of maraschino liqueur, and three quarters of an ounce of the fresh lime juice. Both of these cocktails will be served up, so I hope you have a couple glasses chilling. If not, no sweat. Grab ice and we can shake. About 15 seconds or so. Grab your chilled glasses and we can double strain into the cocktail glass. I'm gonna start with the Naked and Famous and then the Division Bell. Regarding garnish, Naked and Famous is gonna be naked, so no garnish. Now the Division Bell will get some grapefruit oil right across the top. To differentiate between the two, I'm going to make a little grapefruit garnish for the Division Bell. Cheers. Obviously, they look remarkably similar. You get that pink from the Aperol. I'm gonna start with the Naked and Famous. Cheers. Oh, that is good. Smoky, the yellow chartreuse, you do get it. So it is herbal, bright, tart, clean. It's delicious. The division bell, mm, okay. Yeah, you get the grapefruit on the nose. Grapefruit and mezcal are a good combination. Also grapefruit and Aperol are a good combination. So this makes a lot of sense. Mm, they are really close. Obviously you don't have the chartreuse, so it's not as herbal. I like the maraschino in there, personally, between the two, I think I like the Division Bell a little bit better. That's right now, tomorrow that might change. I would like a second opinion. Welcome Oz. Second opinion Oz, that's what they call me. That is what they call wow. me. Wow. Cheers, I will try the Naked and Famous first. That's really good. Ooh, mm. Okay, cool, I'm gonna try the Division Bell then next. Cheers. Mm. That's nice. I like the grapefruit on top. They're really similar. Really similar. Do you have a favorite? No. They make them both. Who mm -hmm. cares, man? Live your live your life. Dream your dreams. Dream your dreams and then have them shattered. That concludes today's experiment. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Bespoke Post, for sponsoring today's film. We will see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. Hi y'all. Hi y'all. Come here. I don't want to overdo the dog on the channel. Ta-da! <sighs> He's a dog. She's, She's a really big puppy. She's a real chonker. Okay. All right. Don't forget to tip your bartender and feed your dog. Cheers,